Let's look at four types of reliability, how we can actually measure reliability. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure everybody understands the difference between reliability and um, uh, validity. So reliability is a form of consistency, whereas um, validity is a, is a form of accuracy. So I've got, I've got a little scale here. This is a mail scale, an old-fashioned analog mail scale. You put the mail on here, and the, the lever goes up, and it says how much we weigh. Now, it's a little tricky here, but I'm going to set it down right in front of me here, and I'm going to ask my assistant, Beep Beep, to come here, and he is going to sit on the mail scale. And I put him on, and it says he weighs 350 grams. Now, I want to see if this is a reliable measurement. I'm going to put him on it again and see what it says. I put it on again, and it says 350 grams. Aha, uh -huh, it seems, seems reliable. Let me try it one more time. Yep, 350 grams. So the reliability is perfect here. However, this is not, the validity is very low. The actual male scale only goes up to 350 grams. And Beep Beep has eaten too many cookies. He actually weighs about 450 grams and he weighs too much for the scale. So even though it was reliable, it wasn't valid, it wasn't accurate, it wasn't giving me good uh, information. We want measures that are both valid, accurate, and reliable. So let's, let's talk about reliability. The first type, the easiest type, is what's known as test-retest reliability. That's, uh, that's what we were just doing here. We were weighing beep beep twice, seeing if uh, uh, he weighed the same amount. Now, how would that work in the psychological study? Um, suppose we measure somebody's personality, their extroversion at time one, and then maybe a week later at time two, we measure their extroversion again. And we measure like 100 people and get two data points for everybody. And some people will be more extroverted the first time than the second time in the opposite direction. Some people will have the same extroversion score each time. But because there's of, of moods and things like that, and I'll just, just trait error, there's going to be a, a, a variety of responses. So we can get the data from the 50 people or 100 people and look at the correlation between the responses at time one and time two. And it would probably come out to be maybe 0.8, maybe sometimes 0.7, if there's a lot of things happening in their lives, something like that. It would be fairly high, but it wouldn't be close to being uh, exact. So that's test, retest, reliability. So measuring the exact same twice at two different times, we'll see how well they're correlated. Now, a good test, will have a high test-retest uh, correlation. Um, cognitive ability tends to have a real high test-retest uh, um, correlation because it doesn't depend on people's moods. Extroversion, that depends on people's moods. Most personality traits uh, uh, do. Now, another type of reliability is what's known as internal consistency. That measures the degree to which the items measure a single construct. So if we have like seven questions measuring something like uh, extroversion, they'll all be a little different. And to what degree do they measure some central tendency? Well, there's a formula that we can use to calculate what's known as Cronbach's alpha to show how well those seven questions go together. We'll look at that a little bit uh, later when we finish going over these four. Another uh, approach, another form of reliability is called parallel forms. So we could l measure something and then change the order of the questions or maybe put it on a different survey, maybe have an online survey and a non-paper survey for the same person, maybe just change the order of the questions around and see how much the form of the question or the, the form of the questionnaire um, influences uh, 
the, the variable that we're measuring. Maybe uh, if we ask some questions first and then others uh, second uh, afterwards, that's going to be people are going to respond differently than if we had changed the order around. And so the correlation of scores using form one and form two are what's known as parallel forms reliability. And then another type of reliability that's not used in survey research is known as inter-rater reliability. That's where we have two people rating people, like maybe uh, uh, people rating the productivity of uh, an employee. We can measure the correlation or the percentage agreement between the two raters to see if uh, um, they're uh, how. To, to what degree they're they're looking for the and observing the the same thing so that would be inter-rater reliability now let's come back to internal consistency and that's the variable Cronbach's alpha or the coefficient of reliability it's sometimes uh, uh, called and this is really important when measuring psychological constructs since most variables can't be measured directly we can't directly measure extroversion. We can't directly measure um, one's attitude towards their supervisor. We have to ask a series of questions that capture the different ideas involved in those. So on the following page, we've got a series of items that measure uh, extroversion. And um, so since extroversion is a pretty broad concept, we've got to ask a lot of questions to reduce the trait or the random error. And some of them are gonna be uh, reverse scored. So on this next page, we have uh, an extroversion scale from John's Big Five uh, um, inventory, version 4A and 54. And this is a standard Big Five measure. And this is just the personality inventory. So you ask, it's a Likert scale going from strongly disagree to strongly agree. I see myself as someone who is talkative. So that would be that would be a measure of extroversion, being talkative. And here we have one that's reverse scored. I see myself as someone who's reversed. So people that would tend to give four or fives here will tend to give one or two here. But there's some people who don't see themselves as especially reserved, and they might see themselves as extroverted, but they don't like talking too much is full of energy, oh yes, maybe a five here, where they might only give themselves a three for talkative, so they'd still be somewhat, uh, they'd still be extroverted like that. I generate a lot of, I see myself as someone who generates a lot of enthusiasm. That'd be a characteristic of someone who's extroverted. Now here's a reverse scored one, tends to be quiet. So that means if somebody um, put a one, that would be in the direction of extroversion. We'd have to change that one to a five when we combine them all together. Uh, I see myself as someone who has an assertive personality. So this is a different aspect of extroversion is being a, assertive. And then I see myself as so, sometimes shy or inhibited. That's a reverse chord. And here I see myself as someone who's outgoing and sociable, which is another sign of extroversion, being outgoing. But it's, but it's a lot different than um, uh, being assertive, and it's even different than being uh, talkative, because you can be very sociable and outgoing without being uh, talkative. So this captures different dimensions, but when we put them all together and get data from a lot of people, we get a coefficient uh, of reliability, Cronbach's alpha, of like 0.7 or 0.8, sometimes 0.85 for this scale, I believe. And that shows that it's measuring um, uh, one single concept. So the coefficient alpha should, should always be at least 0.6. Greater than 0.7 is, is more credible. Greater than 0.75 means, yeah, this is really measuring one central uh, idea. And so that's a measure of internal consistency, which is one of the four types of reliability.